Okay, the previous video was an introduction to CSS. It wasn't the correct formatting and even correct syntax or terminology. So what this video is going to do is go through the actual process of telling you what the correct syntax is, how to write it, what the different variables are, etc, etc. Okay, so we're going to get started. There's basically certain structures that you have to include to create CSS coding. By this I am talking about uh, external or internal uh, CSS. I don't want to talk about inline because it's a completely different syntax and I very rarely use it and uh, when we get further into the uh, videos I'll explain when it's important and necessary. These structures are basically having a selector. I'll explain these in a minute but uh, I'll go through the list. So we have to have a selector then define some properties give those properties a value and the fourth one is something to do with the selectors it's called a pseudo class or a pseudo element and these are just extensions to the selector options knowing all those four um, variables we can then move on and understand how to construct CSS correctly basically you have this which is a selector in this case it's an example of a class uh, selector you can tell it's a class selector A because I've written class and B because it's got the uh, period point in front of class which is the definition of a class selector okay then what you need to do is write a curly bracket this is standard in all CSS and then from that point on you can then create your property list okay in this case we're going to try and define a border width okay it could be on a div or uh, something else or a table even and we want to define the width of the border so you write in border width and that's your property then you create a colon and then you give a value in this case it's one pixel which means the border width will end up being one pixel wide all the way around your object okay you then cr close that uh, argument by giving it a, a semicolon and then finally you give a closed curly bracket that's the standard structure of a piece of CSS styling it will change because you can add things uh, properties and things to the uh, the actual values etc etc and increase the actual lines with different style attributes to, for different objects and such like but we'll talk about that when we get into the more complex view of actually coding it now there's four types of CSS selectors available if you remember what the selectors were, they were the top elements uh, which define the style and they are in this list HTML HTML is basically based on known HTML coding tags for instance we can have uh, body uh, HTML itself, you can have uh, div, you can have uh, p for paragraph, you can have uh, h1 through to 6 for the different headers anything that's a HTML um, tag you can style by using a selector, CSS selector as a reference to that uh, tag. The next one is class, I just showed you an example of class the definition of a class is when you have multiple objects you want to give the same style you assign a class to it basically this allows you to then not create errors in your uh, validation document and it also gives you opportunity to uh, manipulate multiple objects at the same time ID, that's uh, the variation to this like a, a passport or an actual personal ID an ID is individual to a specific object it can't be repeated on several different objects because you will get validation issues and it basically means it's uh, uh, a personalized styling option for a specific object, piece of text, whatever. Now contextual, that's the final one, that's basically when you can mix a lot of these to together in a single uh, style attribute and um, basically using the expression to kill two birds with one stone you can style two different things from a class and an ID at the same time for instance I'll show you and explain those when we do some examples so these are the different formats
HTML class ID and your multiple one which was the uh, contextual one okay and I'll explain these as we uh, actually make them that's how they work there. they're all written the same okay twelve types of CSS properties available this is the big list uh, we'll go through these when I actually do the coding but these are all uh, possible to be styled differently and uh, gives them different uh, styling attributes whether it's color um, some kind of dimension some kind of uh, alteration to the style of the actual object itself whatever and I'll explain these as we go through them we have two types of pseudo um, classifications as well and these are pseudo class and pseudo element and I'll explain what these are by using the same process I did with the uh, CSS selectors basically for instance you have a normal HTML selector like A is for when you want to do a, a modification to a link uh, on your web page what you then do is you put a colon and then you apply a pseudo attribute which in this case is link so you can change the color of the link on a a rollover of a HTML link you then open the curly brackets add your property colon then add your value and then basically close it okay so that's roughly the same as a normal uh, CSS syntax but it has this pseudo value which is basically colon and then the value you want to uh, add okay link uh, rollover whatever okay with an element it's much the same you have your HTML selector in this case it's a P so if you want to change a uh, text in your paragraph what you can do is add an uh, element pseudo element which is basically a colon again and then the pseudo attributes in this case first line so what this is going to do is it's going to style the first line of your paragraph to be different to the rest of the paragraph okay and then you do the same syntax as uh, the others give it a property so the font size is going to change colon and then make it 20 pixels for example as a value close it all and that will change the first line of any paragraph you have inside your web page to be 26 20 pixels high okay so it's all the different ways of doing the syntax the different and uh, proper uh, names for everything and how you actually format it what I'm going to do next time is to go through the options of telling you how to actually code it properly in inside a HTML document. Okay, so that's it for this video.